Can you tell what the three green cells have in common? I will show what key strategy you need to solve all three and when to apply it, plus the nine pointing pairs you can use to solve the rest of this puzzle. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, pointing pair number one. Look here in block two. You have this three cutting across. Row three, you have this three coming up. So these threes are in the same column, column five. And what I just did is called Snyder Notation. Anytime a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate. You mark it in case you solve one, you can solve the other right away. When they're in the same column like this, they're also known as a pointing pair. What that means is that the threes have to be somewhere in block two. They're in the same column, so no other three can be in column five. So you cannot have a three in any of these spots anymore, and you can't have them here because of this three. And so this is called a pointing pair. And so you have the pointing pair knocking out the threes from here, and this right there. So our first pointing pair allows us to solve for three right here. Greetings, friend. Today we're solving a classic Sudoku by Serhi Tashinko, who has set puzzles for the Sudoku Grand Prix. This is a recommended puzzle that Serhi posted on Logic Masters India. Thank you, Serhi, for letting me feature puzzles on my channel. Now, let me show you pointing pair number two. It's going to involve the fours. Okay, you have this four right here across row one, and this four coming up. So you're going to have a pointing pair of fours in block one. And with this four and that four, we can solve for four here in block seven. And then we can do another pointing pair with the fours. You have this four cutting across here, this four coming up, two possibilities for four in block three. So the fours can't be in these spots. You have this four and this four, we can solve for four in block six, and then carry it over with these two fours and that four to block five. All right. Now let's look for pointing pair number four. It involves the sevens. This seven cuts across. Row seven, this seven comes down, column six. You have sevens as a pointing pair right there. And then with this seven, we're going to put these sevens right here. This is going to lead to a solve, I promise, because you can do now with the eights another pointing pair. All right, so pointing pair number five is with the eights. Cut across right here. Two possibilities, four and eight. In block five, the pointing pair. And with this eight, the eights are limited to these two spots. And this is a key little tip for you in case. You ever see Snyder on top of each other like you have right here? That means you found a hidden pair. The seven and eight have to be in two cells in block two. They're limited to the same two cells. You can eliminate all other candidates from those two cells. So now we have a nice looking hidden pair. And this allows us to create another hidden pair because you have this two cutting across and the three. The twos are going to be right there. So this is a two, three hidden pair, which leaves us with a naked pair the last three digits are a one six nine naked pair we can remove this nine from right there and we can remove the six from right there and since this is a now a naked triple one two three if i said pair i didn't mean it this is a naked triple you're going to push a four and a five as the last two digits in row three so i kind of want to show you that full naked triple and all of those hidden pairs and naked pairs. And now for pointing pair number six, it's gonna be with the twos right here. Whenever you have a hidden pair, they act as a pointing pair as well, just like with those threes. So now the twos can't be in these spots. You can solve for a two right here. And now we can go for pointing pair number seven. It involves the nines. Okay, you got a nine right here. You got a nine right there. Nine of these two spots, we found another hidden pair. But this hidden pair acts as a pointing pair. And so since the nines are limited in block eight to column five, they can't be anywhere else along the column. So they can eliminate from right there. And we can solve this cell now for a nine because the one and six have to be in these two cells. And now we're up to pointing pair number eight. All right. And it's going to involve the ones right here. You see that? You got a 1 8 naked pair acts as a pointing pair as well. And since you have need to have a 1 in one of these spots, this can no longer contain a 1. So we're solving a 6 here and a 1 here. This is just a fun puzzle. Once I looked at it, I knew I had to share this with 
you. We were already up to eight pointing pairs. And what we can do is now with this one and these ones, you can solve for a one right here. So this pointing pair allows us to solve the one here and there. And now I shift your focus. I'm going to show you how to solve these green cells. And again, it doesn't involve pointing pairs. It's something else you, you got to find if you want to solve this puzzle. So look right here, row four, column two. What can this cell be? Can't be a one or a two, can't be a three, four, five, seven, eight, or a nine. This is a naked single six, okay? Not a big deal, cool. What about this cell right here? Well, it can't be a one, two or a three from that hidden pair. Can't be a four, can't be a six, seven, and eight from that nice naked pair, and it can't be a nine. This is a naked single five. All right, are you starting to figure this out? Naked single six, naked single five. I wonder what this cell is going to be and what strategy you need for it. Can't be a one, can't be a two, can't be a four, five, six, eight, or a nine. Also can't be a seven. So this is a naked single three. Now what's unique about this particular cell is that you could have solved it from the very beginning because you notice these are all given candidates. The one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are all given. So you could solve this right when you started the puzzle. So when did you spot that this was a naked single three? At the very beginning, just now, or somewhere in between? Please drop in the comments, share with the other viewers. I need your comments in order to grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. And I value them so much, I'll respond to every single one. And I would love to hear from you. And if you didn't spot this right away, that's okay. You can learn to spot naked singles better with this tutorial. What does this three give us now? It now allows us to disambiguate the two and three right here in block two. And I gave you eight pointing pairs, I promised you nine. So now we're gonna do the ninth pointing pair. Look at this three that we just solved, plus this three gives us a pointing pair of threes in block six. So that's pointing pair number nine. And with this three right here, now we can solve for a three in block nine. And we're gonna keep solving with the threes. With these two threes, we can solve for a three right there. And with these two threes, we can solve for a three here displacing the Snyder 3 right there and solving this cell for a 3. Now I'll go over here to column 2. You notice we only have two digits remain, a 5 and a 9. I got a 5 right there, so that's got to be your 9, and that's going to be your 5. And now with this 5, we know this can no longer be a 5. That's got to be a 4. So you can put the 5 right there, displacing that Snyder 4. We can clean all that up. And we're not done with the 5s yet because you have these two 5s and this 5. We can solve for a 5 right here and then with these two fives we can solve for a five in block nine now let's move to block eight you have a nine right here we can disambiguate the seven nine in block eight and let's follow the sevens you got these two sevens in this seven we can solve for seven in block nine and with these two sevens in this seven solve right here in block six and these two sevens solve for seven in block four and now let's move up here and look at where the sixes can be. You got a six cutting across row two. You got this six coming up column three. That has to be a six. And then with these two sixes, you're gonna have a six right there. And with this six and this six, we can solve for six in block nine. Only place left for six in block eight is right there. And we're looking for a two eight to finish block eight. I got two right there, I'm gonna pull it over from block nine. So that's your two and that's your eight. We have a nice full house right here. I don't see an eight in row seven, so that's gotta be your eight. That's gotta be a one. And now let's kind of look for some more ones here, right? I don't see a one in column eight. So the only place a one can be has to be right up there. And then with these two ones, we can actually solve for one right here. And you see there's two missing cells in row six. Well, this one can't be a one. That one has to be your one now. So let's switch over. We need a two and a nine. I see a nine right there. So that's gotta be your nine. This has gotta be your two. And with these twos, we're gonna have a two right here. I don't see an eight in block seven. And with these two eights, we can solve for an eight right there. I'm just doing a little cross action here. Disambiguate the seven and the eight right there. 
And then I look across, I know I can solve this remaining cell with certainty because I have eight filled out, it's called a full house. So that has to be the nine, this has to be your seven. And then we can move ourselves over here and what are we missing? It looks like a two and a nine, I got my nine right there. So here's your nine and there's your two. And with this two, you can solve for two right there. I don't have a one yet in column, nine so that's got to be a one disambiguating the eight and the one right there and then our last digit is an eight challenge yourself to spot the naked singles in this next puzzle by serhi Tashenko. thank you so much for watching